I'm very glad to be here this morning. And uh, my name again is Gina Chadden. I am a librarian with the West Virginia Library Commission. And I want to talk to you today about some additions and some changes to WestVirginiaInfoDepot.org, which is a site I hope that we all know and love. Um, let me go ahead and get right into it. Okay. There are a few things on the site that I wanted to mention this morning that are not as new. They're a little bit older, but are probably new to you because they're not too old. Um, some things that have been hiding in plain sight or possibly um, gotten a refresh and look a little different. But uh, before I get too far into that, I wanted to ask a few trivia questions, which I was hoping to see if people could answer in the chat. If I can actually bring up the chat window. Not sure how to make that appear. I may need to actually turn off screen sharing for a second in order to be, yeah, okay, I can see the chat now. Um, first of all, can anybody out there name a database in WV Info Depot where you could find an encyclopedia entry on butterflies? Anybody got a guess? World Book, yes, okay, that's the one I had in mind, cool. Um, can anybody name a database on InfoDepot where you could find advice on how to make a will? This one's a little newer. Get about five more seconds. Okay, there's a database. Yes, Legal Information Reference Center. Someone got it. I'm very excited. Legal Information Reference Center is really neat. It's got full text PDFs of NOLO books. So you can answer a lot of legal information questions with that. And uh, last one, can anyone name a database on WV Info Depot where you could find a company profile for Virgin Group, which is in the news a lot here lately? Let's see, this one's a little bit older. Going once, going twice. Regional business, I'm actually not as familiar with that one, so maybe, but that is, that's a business database, so I would definitely go there. Business Source Elite is the one that I had in mind, so still cookies to Mary C. Okay, and kind of moving on to the next slide, can anybody think of a way on Info Depot to search all three of these databases at the same time? Anybody? Anybody? One search, yes, and that is what I want to talk to you. Yes, the search bar at the beginning, and that's what I want to talk to you about first. Let's see if I can share my screen again. PowerPoint slideshow. Okay. WVLC One Search. It's actually kind of the name that we've given our EBSCO Discovery Service. And it searches multiple Info Depot databases at the same time. Um, you find it at the top of the home page when you first go to Info Depot, and you can also find it at the top of the two database pages on the Info Depot site. It searches a lot of different databases at the same time. That's generally what this kind of piece of technology does. There's a little bit of a trade off in that you don't get all of the specialized search filters that you would if you went to that database directly, but you still get a lot. You get, you're able to search by publication, the type of publication, like you can limit it to like book or journal article, et cetera. Um, I wanted to do just a little bit of a demonstration of a search in case you all are not as familiar with it. Let's see if I can bring up Info Depot. Oh, look, I still have my search from last time in here. Um, just Imagine that you're a high school student and you want to do a search on Walt Whitman just to see what you can find. And it searches multiple different databases at the same time. It starts with this uh, thing called a research starter at the very top, which is a little bit like uh, encyclopedia entry. So this is another place that you could go to look for that. Um, and then there are books, articles, images, all sorts of things will turn up when you do a OneSearch search. Let's see, I'm going to switch screens again. Let's see. 
Hmm. Okay, and um, a lot of the newer changes to Info Depot are a little bit cosmetic in nature. We updated the buttons. It's one of the biggest, most visible changes that you're going to see because EBSCO released a lot of new graphics for their databases recently. Um, we did update some of the descriptions to be a little closer to, or I guess to be a little bit less marketing speak and a little bit closer to what people would actually want to go to the databases to look for. We also did add some descriptive headers to sections where there were big blocks of text and also to kind of point out the answers to frequently asked questions. Like one of the biggest ones, how do I get in? Um, there's a little bit of information there for people to find out how to get the password to the databases. And hopefully that will make life a little bit easier for all involved. Um, another update to an old favorite is we've made some changes to the West Virginia page. Um, one of the first things that we did was we added history and genealogy to the title to reduce a little bit of confusion from some of the government information, which is, spoiler, one of the other things that we added and wanted to talk about. Um, we added a few new entries, including links to our state's uh, hub for the Digital Public Library of America, Digital Virginias. Um, hopefully you are fairly familiar with that, and if not, that's something I'm going to talk about a lot more later this afternoon. Let's see. And that's, that's kind of some of the things that you're already more familiar with. Let's move on to talk about what is really new about the site, what you may or may not have seen before. Let's see, we did, as I mentioned a few moments ago, add a government information page. We wanted to, um, it's a bit of a departure from the original Info Depot idea of just kind of the databases, but it was kind of inspired by my original question when I first became acquainted with the site and I saw West Virginia and I wasn't sure, like, is that, is that information about the state? Is that research or history or culture information? So we kind of, we kind of split that into two and separated this. I didn't want the site to be just an endless list of links, so it is not all-encompassing. It is more of an introduction to different sources of federal and state government information as well as legal information. And um, it's a little bit of a work in progress there. It, the idea was that it would help patrons with school assignments, any kind of general research they're doing about something that's going on in the state, like elections. And it has, I think the, um, the state government information is a little bit more detailed because that was something that we really didn't have any place else. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. The, um, the federal information section does link to our FDLP LibGuides, which talk a little bit about the Federal Depository Library Program and list all of those libraries in the state. So that is kind of a gateway to that information, but I did not want to recreate that. So um, there's also a legal information section because that is, that's something that I know as kind of a beginning librarian I really struggled with. So there are a couple of links to first the legal information reference center database that we talked about in the trivia earlier. Um, but also to the state law library because they have also their own reference librarian and they have a lot of resources there that can help you. Let's see. There is a new section of the site um, called how to and tutorials and right now this is mainly a widget that kind of directs people to our patron facing niche academy tutorials. This also, like many parts of the site, is a work in progress. Um, we have also a staff facing niche academy site full of tutorials that we'll talk about in a minute, but I'm guessing that I know I can benefit from a lot of the tutorials that are here as well. So you should be consider kind of both sites open to you as library staff. The idea is that this is here to help people with Info Depot databases. So I really wanted to point out the categories column on the right. You can filter the tutorials that show up here by clicking one of these categories. And at the very bottom, alphabetically, there is WV Info Depot. And that will filter the tutorials to just those that apply to resources on the Info Depot website. Um, we have um, new, tor new tutorials that we're working on, and as soon as those are created, they will show up here. Some of the tutorials we get from something called the Niche Academy Marketplace, and they are created by other libraries or other organizations that allow the community to reuse their materials. Ideally, we're going to kind of create more of our own for that, and um, 
I definitely take I take requests. So <laughs> I do have quite a few that I'm working on right now. One of the things that we've really wanted to emphasize this year, just because of the coronavirus pandemic and some of the economic situations that are happening are Learning Express Library and Job and Career Accelerator. Um, love them or hate them, they are a free resource for patrons to use and they are also a cloud-based resource. So I'm really trying to develop tutorials on them because they will allow people to, specifically Job and Career Accelerator, they will allow people to kind of track their entire job hunt on the cloud, whether or not they have a computer at home. They can go to any computer, be it at your library, in your library's parking lot, at a friend's or family, person, any, any computer that they can get a hold of. They can save their application materials there. They can track if they've applied for a job or interviewed for a job. They can keep track of what stage they are at. So that is, that's really something that I wanted to emphasize. Um, there is already a tutorial for Learning Express Library. I'm still working on one for Job and Career Accelerator. Um, there's also some other things that are in the works, um, an introduction to WV Info Depot, just in general, if you need a place to start. Uh, this is something I was already working on and I've also had a request for it. I'm working on a tutorial for generally searching EBSCO databases if you're completely new to that and also about halfway through making a tutorial for OneSearch itself. I'm working on a tutorial for OneSearch which ties in with the EBSCO general search tutorial and again there are more in the pipeline that I haven't started yet and I do take requests. Um, let's see. Okay, one of the newest things that I'm really the most excited about are the two resources pages. And if you have not seen these yet, I want to show you where to find them. They are not immediately evident. Oops. Let us go back to West Virginia Info Depot. And to find the two resources pages, you are going to want to scroll all the way down to the bottom of any site on Info Depot. They are in the footer. There are links to resources for library staff and resources for educators. So you can click either one of these and they will take you to a page, which is very much still a work in progress, but hopefully will be very useful now and in the future. Let's switch screens. So the resources for library staff page has some things that you may be familiar with. It is the new home for search widgets. That's where you can find little snippets of code that you can put the OneSearch box with the little bear on your home page, your library's website or LibGuides or any place you would like to stick that. There are, I believe, also widgets for consumer reports and World Book. The World Book ones are a little complicated. So if you would like to use any of those and have trouble definitely reach out and we'll work through it. There is a link to a Google Drive space where we are storing promotion, outreach activities, like downloadable bookmarks, posters, social media graphics and sample text that you can share out on Facebook. Um, there are activities and lesson plan materials for educators. We'll talk about what, some of the resources for educators in just a moment. Um, links again to Niche Academy, but also our continuing education pages and some resources that we offer for library and information science research. Some of those require a library commission library card and that's noted where that is the case. This is also the new home for monthly usage reports and statistics in the hopes of not having to send those out as huge attachments to emails that are probably going to get stuck in spam filters or what have you. That has only been happening for a couple of months, but if you need to download statistics for the Info Depot databases for your purposes to find out kind of what's seeing more use and what what you might have the opportunity to share a little bit more with your patrons and you're having trouble finding that information, please let me know and we will figure out what's going on. But that is, it should just be in a Google Drive folder. So resources for educators is another website that is linked at the very bottom. And this one is, I guess, still in a little bit more of a state of construction than library staff's resource page. 
it offers the same link to promotion outreach activities and lesson plan materials. That is a mouthful. <laughs> there are a lot of different things in that Google Drive space. They're organized by folders right now, and those folders are mostly labeled by database. I'm working on some different ways to search and organize, I'm working on some different ways to find those, but that's, that's still right now, everything is separated out by individual database. Um, let's see, there are a couple of what I'm calling landing pages. Um, one, only one of those is complete at the moment, the career and test prep page. And I would like to, just show you a little bit of that so you can kind of see what I have in mind. Let me share the screen again. Share. Okay. If we go to the resources for educators page, they're pretty close to the top. Ideally, these will have some kind of visual presence on the home page as well, because these are meant for users as well as teachers. This is really just kind of another gateway into some of the major resources that we offer. Um, the only, really for career and test prep, the only two things that are here right now are Learning Express Library and Job and Career Accelerator. And then there are tutorials to those materials as well. I'm working on a landing page that I'm calling Homework Help, where I wanna try to gather just those resources that are kind of aimed at students and their teachers, but that one is still in progress and we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's see. This also has links to tutorials and training. Oops, let me go back. This also has links to tutorials and training, the same Niche Academy patron and um, staff facing academy trainings. But we've also added links to some of the educator resources that are offered by other parts of the Library Commission. There is a link here to an OER, Open Educational Resources Guide that we created, and also links to Summer Reading and Family Read Week resources. So those are things of big interest, especially during the summertime. Oh, and upcoming, I talked a little bit about the homework landing page that is in progress. It is hopefully not going to be too fancy, very similar to the career and test prep page, just focusing on those Info Depot resources that are most of interest to students and their parents, um, mainly K through 12, possibly college homework assignments as well. Um, it's going to be short. We don't have a ton of databases to begin with, but that's probably going to be a good place for people to start if they're very new to Info Depot. Ideally, I'm working on a teacher's guide as well. Um, and this may take the form of an update to the resources for educators page. Um, through this guide, I want to highlight some of the special educator features of certain databases and some of the other promotional materials that we offer, the lesson plans, the scavenger hunts, and other activities that can kind of introduce their students to the databases. There are also a lot of letter templates, not just for educators, but also for librarians, letter templates that can be sent to parents or from libraries to educators that might be really useful to people trying to let people know what their libraries offer. Um, I just wrapped up a set of themed emails, like a back to school series that went out to the directors lists and I believe also the WVLA list serve. I meant these to just kind of introduce people and increase awareness of some of the offerings on Info Depot and how they might be used. I'd like to continue doing more of these in the future. I know I've got a plan, maybe not every week in the same way as I did through the last couple of months, but I know in October it's Health Literacy Month, so I'm working on something to send out uh, hopefully next week to emphasize some of our health and medical wellness offerings. November, possibly looking at something on citation builders in Info Depot databases, and January, get ready for tax time, things like that. If you have some sort of programming that you're working on in your library and would like to know a little bit more about what Info Depot offers that can help out with that, definitely reach out. Like again, I take requests. And ideally, more tutorials will be coming out. Um, ideally connected to Info Depot. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Please suggest uh, if you 
have something that you want to learn more about or work to teach your staff with, please do reach out and let us know. Um, and if you want to talk about this a little bit more, I will be, I mean, you can always reach out to me directly, but I'll also be at the digital roundtable tomorrow at, I believe, 2 p.m. if that is of interest. And now, uh, if I can figure out how to get the chat screen back up, I would like to take some questions. I would also like to remind people, this is my email address, and here is a link to a survey that I would really appreciate if you would take. There are only two mandatory multiple choice questions, whether or not this information has helped you. There are a few more optional questions that you can answer if you like. And when you finish the survey, it will provide you then a link to the slides if you would like to download those. But hopefully this link shortener will be easy to read. It's WVLA WVID for the West Virginia Info Depot 2020. And that should take you there. Let's see. And Gina, while yes. you're bringing up your chat, I want to remind everyone that starting in November, that we will be sending you emails to let you know that the EBSCO username, or excuse me, the password will change and that will change in December. So in November, we will start sending out what the password would be. And starting in December, we will also be reminding everyone what the password was changed to. I do realize that being at the beginning of December is a bit difficult. It's in the middle of the school year. Um, but we do want to give you a heads up now that that password will be changing and to please look out for that email with the new information. Yes, indeed. It's one of the joys. Looks like there are a few things in the chat. Oh, good. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad people have been sending those to high school teachers. So we we send things to the list serve, but you know how it is. Some of these things I'm sure are getting caught in spam filters. So I'm not sure that everyone gets everything. The more people kind of sending things out and sharing them, could we get the survey emailed to us? Absolutely. Is this the? Let's see. Make a note. Okay. Email and the link on the chat. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Survey. Someone's already put the Survey Monkey link on there. Thank you so much. Put my. That is my email address and looks like somebody's already pasted the survey monkey link there. And do I have any other questions? I do appreciate you responding and letting me know about the emails. It's good to know that those are getting through. Oh, there are, are there other widgets that we can add to our website beside OneSearch or consumer reports. There are off the top of my head world book widgets and they have separate widgets for each of the different part, like World Book Advanced, World Book Student, World Book Kids, I'm trying to remember all. I think all of the different parts of World Book have their own separate widget, or I think there's just a generic World Book widget that you can get as well. Those should be there. Yes, yes, it was recorded. And are there any other questions? Of course, if you think of a question like 30 minutes from now after everybody has left, feel free to email me or call. I will happily answer. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. If you are typing a question for Gina, please continue to do so. I wanted to let everyone know that at one o'clock, we will be having a session on with the people and the presenter is going to be Betty Knighton. Uh, this session will also be recorded. Um, so if you are running late after lunch, you don't have to worry about that. Um, if you are not joining us for the rest of the afternoon, I hope you have a good afternoon. And for those of you joining us again, we will see you at one o'clock.
I did get a question that I missed about Niche Academy sources. The tutorials in Niche Academy um, come from a couple of places. Some we make on our own and some come from what's called the Niche Academy Marketplace, which means they either come from different libraries across the country or different organizations that have created tutorials that they are offering for free. Some of them are paid and that reminds me, our keynote speakers homeless training, homeless homelessness training with libraries is on um, Niche Academy as well. One of them I think is free and the other one is you have to register for it. I believe the cost is covered, but if you are interested in his complete homelessness and libraries training, that is on our Niche Academy for staff. It's our, on our staff facing Niche Academy site. So. And Gina, you are correct. The Homeless Academy training is paid for by the West Virginia Library Commission. So if you are interested, by all means, do register for that and take that course. See, did that answer the question about tutorial sources? Is, is that what, is, did I get everything? If you have put a question in the chat and I have missed it, please do resend it or let me know. I need to scroll up because I think I got everything. <laughs> 